Hey there, we're doing Google Kickstart round F 2021 and it starts in just a couple seconds. So, I'm about to get underway. Um, okay, we got four problems. A little more. And this usually happens, it takes a while to load the problem for a minute. But here we go. Let's uh, pick up these. One particular monster with n houses, front n, that does evenly. Oh, okay. Okay, I think we get it. Um, okay, this one's one, yeah. Okay, and this is pretty good. So, the first problem. Um, let's go to the next one. See those things that are okay, in the fashion. Which are a little bit. Okay, and then we're on the board. Um, the best place. Basically, you can do like a sweep type of thing. We need to maintain some of the max code. Guess I can use my custom play that. So I could, but. No, it's basically some and here's the okay. So it's D and K. Okay, so
page by title, so that makes it easy. Yep. So yeah, we can see now it turns out to the day. Okay, get in there, then choose my third act. We don't want the car unique. And so we got three specific types. Okay. We're also going to do a bit spun. Okay, I think that's it. This should be D. Okay, here is only 700, is that last figure? Okay, that's a minute. And no problems. So, okay, geometry button. Oh, wow. Okay, that's it. So, okay, I mean, we should use triangles, right? Because why would we use anything other than a triangle? Uh, okay, okay, let's do so. We want what is um, let's fix him. Yeah. So, we need this point class. We don't need it. Let's do oops, yeah, okay, and the white and then there's a blue. So do K and K. Okay, so let's 
either lockturn restrict x a b and x b c x b a or A, B, What is it? That was long ago. No. Okay. Oh. Fine, I guess. Um. Yeah. That's probably fine. Oh, and then it's basically that's this one. Can't do that. There's one. Um, and we're going to see. Seems good. Looks. And this is an eight minute problem. Okay, let's see. Eight minute graph. What are shields? Oh, okay. Okay, we got one answer. Oh, there's a little trick, which is. Oh, we may have to do quadrilateral because I see it could be on the border. That is annoying. Right, it doesn't mean that it's in the triangle. It's not like it's in the of the triangle. Let's see. Mm -hmm. And it should be. Mm -hmm. So, what is on the border? Mm 
Uh, okay, that's pretty much it. So, let's like... Okay, thanks. And that is four times fifteen. Yes. Okay. Let's start cutting this one. Um. So. Yeah, this seems pretty easy. So it's N, N, K. Okay. We use the X. So we do it here. And then L, L, A. And then we have X wide, which is this. Okay, so and then fifteen to four is yeah. Still wrong. Oh, I messed this up. Uh, it needs to be not just collinear, it needs to be Yeah, of two minus two, two minus three. That's what I mean. Ah, uh, that's too much penalty. Okay, but anyway.
Shall we actually at least start? It's certainly in a combination. Okay, so. Okay, so. Given everything that we can reach. So first, let's reach. And. Now I'll. It's not what we're looking for. Bits of the bin. Maybe that one penalty. Oh, that's actually weird. Why is my answer larger than n before? Oh. Very cool. Oops. Push. Two penalties here, unfortunately. Um, but what you got overall seems uh, seems kind of unlikely that we'll hang on to second. So we'll see. Um, but let's go over each of the problems. Okay, so. So the first problem is trash bins, and basically we need to find 
for each um, position, what is the closest trash bin next to our house? So for example, for this zero, we're going to go to this one. Uh, for this zero, we're also going to go to this same one. But for this zero, we're going to go to this one. Because that's closer. And obviously the ones will just stay where they are. And basically all we have to do to solve this problem is we just need to find the closest thing on the left for each element and then the closest thing on the right for each element. And that just takes two for loops at the left. You just come from the left to the right. Um, at each point you track the most recently seen one and then you set that to be your closest thing on the left. Same thing on the right. And then finally at the end, um, your min distance is just here, the min of the left and the right position. Um, so that's from this first problem. You, you need to solve this uh, efficiently, or efficiently because you, you can't do an n squared first time because n is too large. So you, you're going to need to do something like this to get an O of n one time instead. Okay, this problem is a uh, festival. You've got n attractions at a festival that last for d days. The average attraction has a certain happiness and is available from a certain range of days. Um, and then you're going to pick one of the days and you'll choose up to the k of the attractions there and you want to maximize the sum of the happiness of the attraction. Um, so this problem conceptually is pretty simple. It's just, you know, you, you just you just try each of the days and then do a greedy, choose the largest k. Um, the only thing difficult is the constraints are pretty large, so we need to do an n log n type of solution rather than a quadratic type of solution. And yeah, in this case, um, the way that I implemented it was I had a display tree ready in advance. So with that, it becomes pretty simple. Um, I'm just making a bunch of events. So on day, day S, you get a new event of basically a new event with happiness H. And then on day E, you lose the happiness of H, which I just set up as a negative button. And then, yeah, I just do a simple sweep through the days, go through all the events for that day. Um, if it's positive, we're going to insert x into our display tree. If it's negative, we're going to erase x from our display tree, or negative x, rather. Um, and then the what's good here is my display tree has a way to do the sum of the k biggest thing, and that is what um, lets us solve this problem. So there's you know there's kind of a clever idea with display trees where you can get um, a node that represents a suffix. And that's what I'm doing here. Gives me the sum, and overall the uh, runtime is uh, n log n plus two. Okay, so that's problem festival. Problem star choppers. So this one is the geometry problem. Basically, we have a bunch of white stars, and we have one blue star. We want to draw a polygon on the white stars to trap the blue star strictly inside, and not just on the Order, but actually strictly inside, like here, and we want to minimize the perimeter of that polygon. So the key observation is, let's say we have a polygon that encloses the blue star. Well, you could kind of draw in the lines um, between the vertices of the polygon if it's not already a triangle. You can draw what's called a triangulation, and that's a polygon. So this is a good example. Um, so yeah, given a polygon, you can draw this. There are a lot of different options for triangulation, but you can draw a triangulation. And basically what will happen is um, if the point is inside, it will also be contained in some triangle of this triangulation. Uh, the one tricky thing that I got a couple wrong notes for is it could be on the border of the triangle. Um, so there are actually two cases you need to consider. One case is we just try all the triangles. And because n isn't too big, it's only up to 300. We have enough time to do that. That's n cubed. The other case we have to take care of is um, there may be a case where we want a quadrilateral, where the, the blue star is on the border of the diagonal. Um, and that's that turns out to be another case. That's not too hard to take care of, but you've got to make sure you handle it. You can't do n to the fourth here. You cannot try all quadrilaterals. That's an important thing to note. 
So we're, we're able to try both of these cases in only um, in only n cubed time. And the way we do that is basically um, we have two triple nested products. This one tries all triangles. Um, and you just need to implement whether something is inside a triangle. The way you do that is um, basically either x to a to b is a left turn, and x to b to c, and x to c to a, or um, you need to like rotate or you know rotate around your permutation of the triangle, x to b to a, x to c to b, and x to a to c. Uh, this is a quick way to check whether a point x is inside a triangle a, b, c, and uh, it kind of uses it uses this. It uses cross products. Um, cross products are a really key um, operation that you need for geometry problems. So it's good to keep in mind. Good to learn. Yeah. So we're just checking inside triangle, and then we're taking the perimeter if it is, taking the min, and then the other case is basically the one where we talked about. If the point is on this line, then we can iterate over the two points that make up the line segment. So that's A and B. Um, so, and then we check if they're collinear. And also, we need to check that the blue point is strictly in between the points A and B. So that's why we do this dot product. And then if so, basically, we need to uh, find any point on this side and any point on this side. Uh, but we can, we can pick the points freely to minimize the perimeter. Um, because we already know we're, anything we pick, we're good because of uh, Basically, the fact that our point is on this line, anything we pick over here is going to be good. So we just want to minimize the perimeter. So we're going to try every other point. So min AB is the min perimeter for one side, min BA is for the other side. And yeah, we're just checking um, which side it's on. If it's on this side, take the min of min AB. If it's on this side, take the min of min BA. And then another key thing is if another point is on the same line too, it is not allowed. And that's why we're checking for strict left turn in both of these cases. Yeah, and then at the end of that, it's just min AB plus min B. And so these are two different n cubed uh, cases. And so overall, uh, our solution is n cubed. Okay, yeah, let's check the standings. I'm going to guess what's left of this. Okay, yeah, in fourth now. I think, um, yeah, I think that means we're. Finish in fourth for sure. The reason is, even if someone finished right now, they would get worse than third minutes. So, yeah, right now, fourth for sure. Um, okay, and last problem, problem B. Um, Ada has a space with n rooms and m quarters. It's basically it's graph, um, undirected graph, and each room contains a certain number of magic points protected by a magic shield with properties li, ri. Um, to enter this room, you need to get to any room adjacent to it. Um, and then you have to break the shield to this room, but you can only do that if you have exactly, or between exactly li and ri points in case. Um, after you break the shield, you will enter the room, you'll automatically get the points assigned to the room and will not generate any new points. You know, also not generate a new shield after it's broken. You can come back here anytime you want. You start with zero points, and you need to get to k points exactly. You can start in any room, and in any room, um, the room you start in will automatically have the shield broken, and you automatically collect the points in the room. So you actually want to know the number of different ways you can reach this goal of k. And the, the way to tell if two are different is if it's just by the order of rooms that broke the shield. Okay, so that was kind of a mouthful, um, but basically let's let's look at the constraints. And we, the, the immediate thing that stands out is m is only up to 15, that is very small. And the other constraints are all very big. And basically it turns out that um, Oh, I actually, I actually have overflow issues here. But I did that, so that's kind of funny. Um, yeah, technically I should be using, um, I was looking at this, that's why. I should have been looking at this. I see. Yeah, technically I was using, uh, where is my purpose? It's very weird. Okay. 
technically this should be an int64. Um, yeah, and I think that's it. That's good. I'm but anyway, um, yeah, so given that n is so small, we can do this idea where, um, yeah, actually the only thing that matters about our current state is the subset of the two to the n options that we have access to. So which, which subset of the n rings do we have access to? And there, there are two to the n subsets. And because n is only 15 at most, there aren't that many. Um, so we can do a dynamic programming approach, or DP, where um, our state is just the subset of the rings that we have already broken the shields of. And um, the main idea is you know, to initialize um, each room, you can start from there. There's one way to do that. And then given that you have a certain subset, you know which ones you can reach from that subset using the edges, and you know how many points you have using the subset. And so you can just check all the different options for the next room to go to. Um, you have to make sure you haven't already reached it, or you haven't already visited it. You make sure you, you can reach it. And you need to make sure that the points are in the L to R range. And if that's the case, then you can add the number of ways that we've gotten here so far to the number of ways that we can get to this state. And then finally, um, this could really be a you know another loop at the end, but we just put it in here to consolidate and not have to repeat the uh, point adding code. If the points add up to k, we just add the number of ways to get to this particular subset. And that is how we build up our answer and output that. And so, uh, yeah, ends up being pretty simple. Um, that's all there is to it. The runtime is n times 2 to the n. Uh, the reason that it's that fast is because I use bitmass for the adjacency, uh, the adjacency list um, rather than using, for example, a vector vector. Because uh, in this case, you know, n is so small that it will just fit into a bitmap. Um, so that's n times 2 to the n, and that is definitely more than fast enough for n up to 15. In fact, we could solve n up to 20, for example, or even a little bit more, potentially. OK, so that's it for this start round. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you, have, hope you found that helpful. And I will see you in the next video. Um, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want to hear about future videos. But OK, have a good one.